Okay, this is question eight. It says the graph of g of x equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx, a cubic function having a y-intercept of zero, is drawn below. The x coordinates of the turning point of g are negative one and two. Okay, those are the x coordinates of the turning point. What is the turning point? The turning point is what is sometimes known as the stationary points, okay? Those points are the stationary points, very important. So at the first stationary point, we know that x is negative one. We don't know what the y coordinate is. At the second one, we know that x is two. We don't know what the y coordinate is. That's the information we are given so far. Another important point that we're given is that this graph passes through the origin. And we know the coordinates of the origin will always be zero and zero, okay? So 8.1 says, for which values of x will g of x increase, okay? It's a very simple question. It's not difficult. We're asking where graphs are increasing or decreasing. Remember, you just need to look at it from the left going to the right, okay? Look at it. You can even take your finger, put it or as far left as you can on the graph. Put it wherever the graph starts on the left-hand side. And then run over the graph. See if the graph is going down or if the graph is going up. In this case, they want to know where is the graph increasing, okay? So let's go back and look at it. Now, you will notice that this graph from the left, from far left, the graph starts by going down, okay? We're looking at it from the left going to the right. You have to always start at the top, okay? And go, or wherever it is on the far left. So this part, the graph is decreasing, it's going down, okay? It will decrease, decrease until it gets to negative one. After negative one, the graph starts to increase. So this part is where the graph is going up now, okay? The graph is increasing here. So this graph is increasing from here, all the way increase, 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 increase up to this point, okay? So the answer to this question is, we know for a fact that the graph will be increasing from negative one up to two. The big question is, do you include negative one and two or don't you include them? A very, very important question, all right? So the solution for 8.1 is, we know that the graph of X is increasing, all right? Element of what? From negative one all the way up to two. So now I'm worried about the brackets that I need to use. Should I include negative one and two or not? And the answer is you shouldn't include them. So you need a bracket that looks like this, not a square bracket. We are excluding negative one and two because at the turning point, the graph is not increasing nor decreasing. At this point, the graph is stationary, okay? That's why sometimes when we ask you for stationary points, we're actually asking for the turning points. And if you think about it, if a graph is decreasing, it will decrease, 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 and before it increases, it must firstly stop. After stopping, then it's gonna increase, 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 get somewhere, and then stop, and then come back down again. So at the turning point, a graph is neither increasing nor decreasing, it's just stationary. Awesome question. All right, so 8.2 says, write down the x coordinate of the point of inflection. Okay, cool, so what is the point of inflection? The point of inflection is the point where the graph changes concavity, okay? In our, in our case, it's somewhere here. I don't know, but it looks like it's somewhere here. Why am I saying that? If you look at this graph from left to right, okay, for 8.2, the graph from left to right, 8.2, we want to know where this graph, right, um, write down the x coordinate of the point of inflection, which is where the graph changes its concavity. You'll agree with me, concavity means whether the graph is concave up or concave down. Now, if I draw this graph from the left, it looks like it goes this way. It goes down, 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 and comes back up. It looks like a cup. Okay, so we say this is basically an example of a situation where the graph is actually concave up, all right? But then a cubic gets somewhere at a particular point and starts changing from being concave up to being the other way around. So it goes the other way around, okay? That's the shape we are seeing there. So that point where the graph changes from being concave up to being concave down is what we call the point of inflection. That's where it inflects, okay? Very important. Now, that point happens to be exactly between the turning points. So if I've got the coordinates of the turning point, I can use those to work out what is the x value there at the middle of those two, okay? Now, we know that one x value is negative one at the turning point, and we also know that the other x value at the turning point is the two. So I'm looking for the point that is exactly between them because the distance going to the right of that point is the same as the distance going to the left of that point towards the turning point. So the x value I'm looking for is just the midpoint of the x values of the turning points. That's how you get the point of inflection. There are other methods, but this is one method that you could use. So it's negative one added with two, 
Okay, why? Because one X is negative one, the other one is two divided by two. And then we end up with an answer of exactly one over two. So that will be the X coordinate of the point of inflection. That's the X uh, solution. Okay, cool. So we're gonna go to the third question now, 8.3, 8.3. So 8.3 reads as follows. It says to us, for which values of X will G be concave down, okay? We have already discussed the story about concavity. If you look at my uh, drawing here, I did mention that the green part is where the graph is concave down. Now, we just said concavity changes when x is a half, okay? Here, the x value here is apparently 1 over 2. So concavity will change when x is a half. That means the graph will be concave up from a half to the right of a half because all this part is where the graph is basically concave down. So where is the graph? concave down. That's what they're asking. For which values of x will g of x be concave down? We'll just tell them it's concave down after half towards infinity. How do you write that mathematically? You'll just say all x values after 1 over 2, okay? Excluding 1 over 2 because at that point it's not uh, concave up or concave down. That's where it changes its concavity. Very important. 8.4 says to us, if g of x equals to negative 6x squared, that's not g, but g prime. Very important. If g prime of x equals to negative uh, 6x squared plus 6x plus 12, find the equation of g of x, all right? So now let's write what we know about this. We know that the equation of g of x is suppo supposed to be ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx, okay? This is what we know from the given information. Now, the examiner is telling us that the derivative of this graph, which we know how to get, exponent times coefficient, is equal to negative 6x squared plus 6x plus 12. This is what they're claiming will be the derivative of this particular graph, all right? Now, you just have to ask yourself a simple question. We know how to get the derivative. You just multiply the exponent and the coefficient. Now, what must I multiply 3 with to get an answer of negative 6? Clearly, you can see that a has to be negative 2, okay? It has to be negative 2. It has to be negative 2 x cubed. Why? Because 3 times negative 2 will give us negative 6. Let's go to b now, b. What must 2 multiplied with to give us an answer of plus 6? So obviously, 2 must be multiplied with 3. 2 times 3 will actually give us the answer uh, 6. So 2 times 3 will give us the 6x. Now, this is easy. The last one is easy. Clearly, you just have to paste an x there at the back. That's where the derivative 12 comes from. When you derive 12x, the answer becomes a 12. So the final equation of g of x is actually negative 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 12x. If you derive that green answer, you will definitely get the derivative, which is the g prime that the examiner gave to us. Okay, cool. Uh, the last one says that determine the equation of the tangent to g of x that has a maximum gradient. Write your answer in the form y is equals to mx plus c. Okay, cool. So let's try and analyze the story there and see what is going on. Two important words stand out for me. Number one, we are asked to calculate the equation of a tangent. A tangent is a straight line, okay? So my mind already tells me you're going to need two things. What are the two ingredients you need to find the equation? We know that we're going to use y is mx plus c, right? So for us to find the equation, you need a point that the graph passes through, and you also need the gradient of that particular line. So these are the two ingredients that you need in order to find the equation of that line, y is mx plus c, okay? Now, there is important piece of information that they give us, because we need to know, where is this tangent on this particular graph? They're telling us that, that this is the tangent that has a maximum gradient. So these words, maximum gradient, tell us something very interesting, okay? Now, what you need to know about a cubic is that at the turning point, the gradient is zero, okay? As the graph decreases, it has a negative gradient. When it gets to the turning point, when it gets to the stationary point, the derivative all the time, it's g in this case, the derivative is equal to zero, and the derivative is basically the gradient of the line. So the gradient is zero at the turning point. And then the gradient starts to increase and increase and increase, and then it will start to slow down because when it gets here again at the second turning point, the derivative has to be zero again. At the turning point, the gradient, if you draw a tangent here, you'll get a tangent that is parallel to the x-axis. And all lines that are parallel to the x-axis have a gradient of zero, okay? So if this thing has a gradient of zero at the bottom, 
it has a gradient of zero at the top. What do you expect the highest gradient to be? Because it's from zero, it increases gradient, increases gradient, and then it must slow down before it becomes a zero again. So obviously, the maximum gradient is going to be at the point of inflection, where it changes from being concave up to being concave down. That's where the maximum gradient is going to be for the graph as well as the tangent. Okay, so let's go and see what is going on. So this tangent they're talking about, people, is basically passing through, I'm trying to find the right marker that we can use that will show us what is going on. Let's find this one. So this tangent is somewhere here, okay, somewhere there. This is where the tangent passes on this particular function, okay? It's at the point of inflection. So we need to know the coordinates of that point. Already we know that x is a half, okay? We're looking for the corresponding y value. Every time you've got an x and you're looking for the corresponding y value, you just need to simply sum the answer in the original equation. It will tell you what the corresponding y value is. So what do we know? We know the function already. We did find that the function is given by uh, negative 2x squared. So I want my y value. So y will be negative 2 into a half uh, cubed, okay? Plus 3 into a half squared, and we need to add that to 12 into a half as well. And then you just try and find out what the answer is going to be. So let's call the calculator. Uh, it's going to be a negative 2 into 1, okay, over 2, close brackets. This has to be raised to the power of a 3, okay, and then minus, not minus, but plus 3 into, we need a half, so it's going to be a half. Uh, come back, we need to backspace that. Okay, cool. So 1 over 2, Make sure when you type in these things, you're not making mistakes with exponents or maybe with the signs that you're working with. So it's negative 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 12, okay? Plus 12 multiplied by an x, which is 1 over 2. I'm expecting a positive answer. If I don't get a positive answer, then I'll know that we probably made a mistake somewhere in our computation. So I'm getting 6 and a half. 6 and a half, which is actually 13 over 2, okay? So the corresponding y value will be 13 over 2. I've got that. I'm now looking for the gradient. But what is the gradient? Well, the gradient is what you get when you derive the function. Every time you are looking at the derivative, you must know that you're looking at the gradient function. Okay, so from what we know, we were told that the gradient should always be the derivative of the graph, which means the gradient in this case is going to be um, negative 6x squared plus 6x plus 12. It's the derivative of what we have here, okay? Now, we need to know what the gradient is going to be when x is a half. So, which means we need to plug in a half everywhere where we see x squared plus 6 into a half plus 12. It will tell you what the gradient of this tangent is going to be, okay? So, let's go and find the solution to this. When we're expecting to get a positive um, gradient because the line is simply an increasing line. So we'll have again negative 6 into, we've got 1 over 2, right, to the power of um, 2 squared, okay. And then we've got 6 into 1 over 2, and that is also to the power of a different exponent, which is a 1. And then we're going to have to add 12 at the end of all that. And then the answer will eventually become 13 and a half. That's actually 27 over 2, okay. So I'm getting a gradient of 27 divided by 2. So I've got all my ingredients. I've got all my ingredients, the gradient, and a point. I can then find the equation of this particular tangent. Right, let's go. So that will be the solution for 8.5. So 8.5, we've got y equals to mx plus c. Now my y value, we said we got the y, y value of actually um, 13 over 2. So that's what we're subbing here, 13 halves. The gradient, we just got 27 over 2, okay, times my x value in this context is actually a half. We know that the x value is going to be a half. So I'm putting one over two. We have to add this to a c. Okay, cool. Then from here, it's just a matter of simplifying this. So 13 halves uh, equals to 27 times 1 is 27 over 4. And that has to be added to uh, c. So we want the difference between 13 over 4. So when you take that 13, okay, divided by 2, and then you subtract... 27 over 4 on both sides. It should give you the solution to the value of C. And I'm getting a C value of negative 1 over 4. That's what your C value is going to be when you divide both sides. Um, when you subtract 27 over 4 on both sides of the equation. So now, therefore, that means the equation of the tangent, okay, of the tangent with the maximum gradient of the tangent with the maximum uh, gradient will just be... Um, y equals to uh, 
uh, 27 over 2x, right, minus 1 over 4, because they said we have to put it in the form y equals to mx plus c. Okay, cool. Awesome question indeed. I hope it has helped you to see two important things. How to find the equation of a tangent, you need a point and a gradient. If you've got an x value, you swap it back to get the corresponding y value. Once you've got the point, where will you get your gradient? Derive. The derivative of any function that you have is always the gradient function. It just gives you the gradient at any x value. We wanted it when the gradient is a half, when x is a half. So we've got a gradient of 27 over 2, which is the solution. And then we could then apply our knowledge of finding equations of straight lines to find the equation of this particular tangent.